I'm Mike Garrity with Three Wide Life. Today we have our cool mashup show, where we bring you a bunch of different motorsports all in one episode. Today we're starting a Joe Gibbs Racing with Mike Lepp, where he has the task of trying to get his pit crew guys faster every single weekend as their athletic director. Next, Kyle Larson, a U-Stack and open wheel standout, trying to make the transition from those style cars to full fendered stock cars. Then we go to Rockingham Speedway, where Shane Meal and his cousin Garrett try to get to victory lane and write their name on the rock. And finally, Doug Rice at PRN to give us a recap on 2012 and what 2013 has to offer in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. But first, we're sitting down with Austin Wayne Self, a young man with 125,000 plus Facebook fans. But how does he take 125,000 Facebook fans and turn it into a regular NASCAR ride? I'm Austin Wayne Self, 16 years old, and uh, trying to make the Sprint Cup. Now, originally we're from Austin, Texas, but uh, we're living in Huntersville right now and uh, doing a bunch, bunch of racing up here. Like many before him, Austin began in go-karts, but starting at the age of five, he definitely had a head start on the competition. Got a go-kart and uh, raced locally, but uh, I think it was about when I was eight. We wanted, we started winning every, everything we could in Texas and uh, decided we wanted to take it to the next level. Started doing national stuff, starters of karting, uh, WKA, and uh, when I was 14, decided we needed to do something else. Started winning a lot nationally and decided to get into a, a big car. So we got into a late model down in Texas and uh, I think I was 15. Did what we could down there and decided it was time um, to move up here in Charlotte and race with the big boys. After racing for almost nine years, Austin realized this was his dream and he wanted to strive towards it for the foreseeable future. I think I was about 14 and, and uh, I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. You know, I fell in love with racing, the atmosphere, the lifestyle, and uh, just couldn't get enough of it. So we knew coming to Charlotte there's plenty of racing up here. and. Uh, and so far it's been really well. Now that he's had a few years of experience in these heavy stock cars, Austin seems to be finding his way and getting closer to victory lane every weekend. Every track we've gone to, we've ran top three. Um, and that's hard because we haven't, we haven't just picked one track to race at. We've been traveling, just trying to get used to driving a bunch of different tracks. And uh, you got guys that are racing at that track every single weekend and they show up and they're automatically really, really fast. Austin will continue to challenge himself as he steps behind the wheel of a 900 horsepower and extremely competitive ARCA car. It's gonna be the power. I think that's, that's a big thing. Um, tracks are gonna be a little bit bigger and the drivers are gonna be, you know, a lot more experienced and uh, they're gonna wanna win a lot more. This year, we've been focusing on saving tires in the late model. Um, so, and that's a big deal in the ARCA car, you know, saving tires is, is what wins races. So we, we've been looking at that and, uh, and hopefully we're, we're going to be getting a lot of practice in with the ARCA car. Ultimately, even at 16 years old, Austin has identified what sacrifices he has to make in order to make it in big time auto racing. You know, it's, it's, sometimes it gets tough, you know, mainly just during the week when I'm at home trying to work on school online and uh, my friends are out you know hanging out with each other and doing stuff and I'm at home working I'm at the race shop working or I'm at the gym working now or I'm at school but uh, once you go to the racetrack you know it all changes you know why you're you're up here doing that why you're making sacrifices because in the long run it's going to be it's going to be worth it Mike Lepp is a former pro cycling coach. He's made his transition to NASCAR as an athletic director at Joe Gibbs Racing. And he now has the responsibility of getting the athletes as strong and fast as possible to make the pit stops quicker every weekend. I, I, I worked in pro cycling and, and um, a lot of guys rode bikes here, so I was helping some guys. And um, I tell people, Joe, Joe came from a football background. He came come from a racing background. And so my boss and a lot of the core people that started Joe Gibbs Racing knew nothing about racing. Um, so the culture of how they built the company was 
it wasn't that odd that they talked to somebody like me who didn't have a background in racing. Now I grew up in Charlotte, I followed racing, it wasn't like I didn't know a heck of a lot about it, but the culture here has been one of bringing people from different backgrounds into things. So I think at that time they said, hey, can you help make pit stops faster? Uh, I guess six years ago we decided that and just set up a system similar to a, a college athletic program and the athletic director is kind of you know over all of that kind of stuff and so um, I also have a sports science background so we wanted to how much science could we introduce into making pit stops fast and so basically what that entails is kind of the uh, recruiting working with the coaches seeing what we can do all the little things we can do to make pit stops faster um, I don't think we really know we have ex NFL player we have ex football players we have soccer players we have motocross guys I wish I could say I knew what sport might yield the best tire changer or whatever, but all I've done is I've come up with dimensions and sizes and numbers, and sometimes that comes from hockey. I, I don't really know, so um, we haven't figured that out yet, but we kind of, I think we're about 50% of the way there of identifying the physical attributes that are needed to do this very fast. The mental side of it is a whole different ball game and I think that's what separates the really good guys from the bad guys and that may be in all sports. Even considering the success Mike Lepp and Joe Gibbs Racing have had on pit road, they are constantly trying to find new and unique ways to better themselves every weekend. I always say every year I say what are a hundred things we can do to get better? As long as you can't come up with a hundred things but I use that same system in endurance athletes. Endurance athletes there's a bunch of little things that make that experience good. Well there's a bunch of little experiences that make fast pit stops. Um, one is breaking down positions. All the positions are different. Tire changers are uh, little quick guys. Uh, Jack Mann's a big strong guy. Um, the carriers are carrying 75 pound tires, so they're kind of somewhere in between power and strength. So one of the way, one of the things we do is we kind of look at what does it take for that person and we've, you know, people ask me what we do in training wise. We're in our gym right now. We probably use this gym less now than we ever have. So we try to take a lot of what we do outside. Um, and I think people have probably heard of things like CrossFit type workouts and things like that to where you're actually simulating the movements that they actually do. A lot of this equipment doesn't simulate that movement. It moves in a fixed, fixed way. So we'll do things with the tire changers like make their guns weigh 20 pounds. Um, but we actually plan the whole year's worth of workouts out at the beginning of the year and try to stick to that template um, sometimes we deviate from it, but um, we think that's critical to being good because the season is won in the chase. When we get into that playoff format, you have to be the best you can be then. Well, that's the last 10 races of the year. So we really try to make it to where we do the least amount to get the greatest results so we're fresh when we get to that point. USAC standout Kyle Larson has drivers like Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Casey Kane saying he's the next big thing. But how does he take that and transition into a full-time ride in NASCAR? Well, I've been going to races since I was a week old. My mom and dad took me to Silver Dollar Speedway just when I was a week old, like I said. So I've been going all my life, but uh, my dad built me a fun cart when I was four just to play around in. And uh, did that until I was seven and then raced competitively at and go-karts are like Red Bluff and Cycland and those tracks in Northern California and then uh, moved into sprint cars when I was 14 and been going strong since then. I think after my first year of sprint car racing is really when I you know figured I could give it a good shot at, it, at making a career out of it and you know I'd never really thought about doing anything else so you know racing's always been the highest priority on my list. Even as a sprint car driver you can make a I mean, a okay living and, and pass without having to have a real job. So, uh, you know, they're just racing sprint cars. That's all I really thought about doing. And, you know, lately it's been kind of, my career's been taken off. So, you know, hopefully someday I can be a NASCAR driver. Well, I had that option to go IndyCar and NASCAR, but, you know, my focus was always on trying to get to NASCAR just because the guys I grew up watching ran NASCAR, you know, Tony Stewart and, and Jeff Gordon and guys like that. So, um, you know, it always, it was always my dream to, to race with those guys on TV, so you can't, you can't race with those guys cause, or if you're in IndyCar because they don't race there, but you know, I'd love to run the Indy 500 someday. I think that's the 
greatest sporting event in the world. So you know, hopefully being with a team like Ganassi, I can have that option here sometime later in life. Uh, well, last year I ran the USAC Midget Series and, and Silver Crown Series, and you know Ganassi's IndyCar shop is in Indianapolis, so a lot of their crew guys and, and even the guys higher up go to the races to watch. And you know they've had guys like Brian Clawson and Brady Bacon and stuff that ran USAC, so you know they've always kept a pretty close eye on that stuff. So I think with me running pretty good in that, help help get me with their NAR Ganassi racing. I'm the only development driver here. Uh, you know, there's other big teams, but they have three or four development drivers, so uh, I'm their main focus, or their only focus as far as development drivers go, so I think that helps out a lot. If you want to make a career in NASCAR, you got to make the step into stock cars sometime, and you know, I think this year was really key for me just because I've accomplished a lot in sprint cars and, you know, got to take the next step, and then uh, the guys at Ganassi and, and Lauren Rainier, they hooked me up with Tim Russell Racing to go run the late model stuff in Florida, and then then uh, you know I'm hooked up with Rev Racing and, and Max Siegel in the k and &E series, and you know that's been going pretty good. So um, you know I got a truck start at Kentucky, and, and we'll make another start in, at Atlanta here soon. So uh, it's been quick, but you know it's been good, and hopefully, hopefully next year we can just keep moving up the ladder. You know, also what I think makes what makes me stand out more than anybody is just that I race so many different types of race cars, and you know I race over 100 times a year, and there's not many people that do that, and. Uh, I think the only other driver that races more cars than I might would be Tony Stewart. So um, I think that's what gets my name out there. And then, you know, lately, you know, Tony's been saying really good things about me, and, and so is Jeff Gordon and, and Casey Kane. So, you know, it's been, I think that's what uh, gets my name out there more than anything. There's been talk about me moving up, but, you know, nothing's set in stone yet. But as far as me, I'd, I'd like to at least race the truck series or the nationwide series. I think that'd be good for me. And, um, you know, if I was racing though, that stuff full time, I wouldn't be able to race sprint cars as much as I wanted probably, but you know, the trucks and, and whatnot is, is definitely where I need to be and to get to the Cup Series. So, you know, hopefully next year we can put something together for me to move up the ladder some more and, and get some more exposure in, on TV and, and race, race trucks or nationwide. Five Six Inc. has expanded into the stock car world and team owner Shane Meal has his cousin Garrett piloting in the UARA series. We visited Rockingham to see how they took to the rock. My name is Garrett Campbell. We're here at Rockingham Speedway with the UARA series. Rockingham is uh, it's just a down south track, you know, and that's where all the racing started. Uh, the grassroots of racing, I guess you should say, is North Carolina. and. Uh, Rockingham's just been a, a nice track. Everybody wants to win at Rockingham. I think we got a really good shot. You know, everybody said in qualifying, man, your car looked the best. You know, we just didn't seem to have enough speed to qualify where we needed to. But I think the car's going to race real well. You know, we got a good setup, and I think we'll be good on long runs if we can keep the tires under. You know, everybody in the garage, like Shane, he was good. You know, he was a real good racer. So it's good to bring him to the track. and. Uh, He's, he's taught me a lot of things here because I've never been on a one mile track a lot. I've raced here like three times. So uh, he's my cousin. He's always been a, you know, somebody I want to be like because he's, you know, made it. He's been to the Cup Series and raced. And uh, he's brought, you know, a lot of knowledge from his dad, Steve Mill, which is he's a very good uh, aerodynamic guy. We caught up with Shane to get his thoughts on the ride. As I was growing up, when you were making your debut as an up-and-coming driver, you, you would come and run here. I've been fast here. I've run in the top five here multiple times. Um, it's a place that I've loved. It's a place you gotta learn to be slow and get into, and that's not even a place I'm really normally good at. And this is a, a track that I've ran well at, and there's a, a couple of little tricks that I hope I can you know, at least share with Garrett, and, and Garrett can learn and, and, and pass about 20 cars today. We need to park on the front stretch in top three. As the green flag came down, Garrett began making his way up to the front. The 75 lap race was saturated with caution after caution that hurt Garrett's chase for the lead. Every restart, Garrett moved up trying to get the 12 car into victory lane. Well, we started in the back, messed up a little bit in qualifying. 
drove up through there, got up in the, you know, we, we set the car for long runs. First little bit we moved up, got in the top 15, got to run well, got to pass in some cars and got three wide with a guy and ended up knocking the toe in out and that hurt us down the straightaways and ended up 10th. We're going to Myrtle Beach next. It's uh, a race that he dominated and won last year. Garrett's really good there. I think he's won there a couple of times and he won the big event last year. I know I've repeated that, but hey, can't be mad. We need to go repeat it with the 12 car. So hopefully we can talk through our life and being on it there. Let's not back considering we had a top 10 day, you know, the race went by real quick. We had a bunch of caution laps that didn't really help us at all. You know, our car was better on the long run. The more laps we ran, the better the car got. You know, we just had too many caution laps. Uh, track position, where you start is real key here, I think. So uh, we'll probably work on qualifying next time we come back so we start up front because we're running the same lap times as the leader there at the end. Man, Shane was so great today, you know. He came up to me before the race, said, look, you got the best car here, you know, and he just makes the best out of every situation. Even though we didn't win the race, he's happy to, we had a clean car and nothing's damaged. And, he gave me some good pointers there before the race, you know. Everything was working out until we knocked the toe out, but uh, you know, there's always another day. We're just glad it's clean. Oh, Rockingham was a blast, you know. It's a big track. We don't get to race on these every weekend, so it was just fun, and uh, hopefully we can come back next year and get a win. I'd love to sign my name in the rock. Where do you go when you want to talk about the best that racing has to offer? You go to the best. That's why we're at PRN. We're going to sit down with Doug Rice and find out his thoughts on the 2012 season and what 2013 may have to offer. Doug, a lot to talk about. The season just ended a couple days ago. Uh, what are your first thoughts about the championship and the way the whole year went? Really happy for Brad Keselowski. Think Brad will be a great champion for the sport for a couple of reasons. One, he's young, he's a fresh face. I really believe that he can bring some new fans to NASCAR racing. And all deference to Jimmy Johnson, if you were a Jimmy Johnson fan, you're already in. If five championships didn't get you in the barn, a sixth one wasn't going to do it. Brad, I think, has a chance to energize some new people and bring a different level of energy to the sport than we've seen recently. So very excited to have a young, fresh face in the championship. Now, he's a little rougher around the edges, which I think is his style. Do you think that brings a different fan base? I mean, he was interviewed by ESPN, and he, he admitted that he had a little buzz from drinking. He had his, more than a little buzz, <laughs> by the way. Uh, I hope they don't sand him down and make him into some innocuous, homogenized driver entity. Leave him alone. Let Brad be Brad. Let him be brash. Let him be a little bit cocky. Because sometimes that's going to irritate you, but that's okay. Dale Earnhardt did pretty good, and he irritated a lot of people. <laughs> he did, and it's funny. His legacy, when you look back, everyone smiles when they think about Dale. When he was with us, not everybody smiled when they thought about Dale. No, he could be coarse, and he could be rough around the edges. And I'm not comparing Brad Keselowski to Dale Earnhardt, but I'm just saying, don't overcoach him. If he wants to be politically incorrect at times, that's fine too. We have a manufacturer that went out on top. Dodge was not able to put together a program for uh, 2013. They went out with the championship. But strangely enough, uh, I didn't see any of the Dodge uh, executives in, in Victory Lane. Do you think that they've given up on this thing, or do they want back in? I think they'll come back in. I really think Dodge will be part of NASCAR racing sometime, not in the too distant future. And if they could have found a good team to have lived with, they would have stayed in the sport. If, if Joe Gibbs Racing, just using a for instance, or Childress had flipped from their manufacturers to Dodge, they'd still be there. But they weren't going to stay and play with one of these halfway teams that's not really a team. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, NASCAR's changing a lot going into 2013. Uh, truck has lowered their, their age to 16, which is what it was when, when Kyle was coming up. Uh, Nationwide has dropped to uh, 40 cars instead of 43. Cup is going to a brand new car. And they're also shaking up who gets in, who's guaranteed in, who's not, and, and provisionals are kind of going back to the old system, the way that you and I remember it when uh, uh, before there were all these locked-in spots. Is NASCAR in trouble, or are they just kind of playing with the game, trying to see what works? NASCAR does have some problems, and they're trying to address them. I'm, I'm glad, but NASCAR is a lot like the Titanic. It was big and heavy and hard to turn. NASCAR doesn't turn real easy, so when they make changes. They, they move glacially. 
But these are some much-needed changes, especially making the Sprint Cup cars look more like cars. I like the idea of 40 cars for the Nationwide Series, and, and I'm genuinely excited that qualifying – it's going to start meaning a little bit more. It's been meaningless since it, the top 35 rule came in. I don't even know why they bothered. <laughs> All right. Your biggest takeaway from the year, uh, and, and then it's time for a nice and well-needed offseason. Biggest takeaway from the year, we saw two new names really solidified as stars in the Sprint Cup Series. One is obviously the champion, Brad Keselowski, and the second is Clint Boyer. Two guys that don't really fit neatly into any molds, and two fellas that are not afraid to speak their mind, that are entertaining and engaging, and most importantly, can race. So that's that's my takeaway. I think we gained two two new legitimate big names this year. It's been a good year. GoPRN.com. Thank you for your relationship with us at Three Wide Life, and enjoy your offseason. Our pleasure. Same to you. That's it for another Three Wide Life. Thank you to all the teams for letting us come and learn more about you. Keep checking our Facebook, our Twitter, and our website. We are constantly updating them with behind the scenes and cutting edge content. And until next week, keep on living the Three Wide Life.